This excerpt from the public television program, The Piano Guy, is brought to you by the National Piano Foundation. In this segment, we're going to work through an old Beatles tune called Blackbird. It's one that you may or may not have kind of top of mind, but I'm sure when you hear a few notes of the melody, it'll, it'll come back to you. It's been a fun tune that's been played for a long time. With me to work through the tune is my good friend, Bradley Sowash. Hi, Bradley. Hi, Scott. Nice to see you again, and thanks as always for being here and helping us out with these tunes. Now, this tune, yeah, it was an old Beatles tune, right? Right. And uh, what I guess there was... There was some... You were saying there's some connection with Bach in this thing? Or? I heard from a friend that... that Lennon and McCartney were sitting around in their in their studio or living room, or they did anyway, and they, they came up with this, trying to play this Bach uh, bure for classical guitar. Okay. And apparently hacking their way through that and not exactly getting it right, they stumbled on uh, a way to play Blackbird. Now, I, I looked that up on the internet and found the bure and listened to it, and I listened to Blackbird, and I can't see very much relationship between the two. <laughs> um, so maybe your listeners would enjoy comparing yeah. them. I'd love to, yeah. Let's, Here, let's... Here's a little bit of Bach's bure. Okay. Now, now that was written for guitar, you said. Yes, exactly. Do, 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 do. Okay. Classical guitar. So right. how do you get from that to... Right. Maybe you have to be a, a, a songwriting genius like, like those guys were. But right. I thought it'd be kind of interesting. I was going to try to morph the two. Okay. And, and see what, what might happen. Um, maybe this is what happened in their yeah. living room with all apologies to Paul McCartney. Maybe this <laughs> happened. <laughs> right, right. Uh, or maybe it's just <laughs> totally made up and fun to talk about. That's so. exactly That's right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, back yeah, to yeah, getting yeah. minor. That's right. <laughs> Perfect. So. Perfect. Well, who knows where the inspiration came from? But let's dig in like we normally do, Bradley, if that's okay. Just to, to give the, the absolute beginners the idea of, you know, where are we going to dig in? And, and the way we always go through is assuming that you don't know the tune and, and that you're going to find it in a lead sheet, not in standard sheet music, but you're going to, you know, open up your fake book, be looking through some fun new tunes to play. You come across Blackbird, you'll see the one note melody line and the chord changes. So let's just do just the melody line by itself, just a couple measures. Isn't that funny you have to do that just by yourself? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're trying to sing it and hold it. I know exactly. it's hard, isn't it? It's all in one position. It's yeah, actually right. not very fancy. You have to do that multiple finger thing on the one. Do, 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 do. That's all I've seen you do that when you improvise sometimes. Um, okay, that's pretty straightforward. Now, what chords go along with those first couple measures? Well, the thing about it, um, in a way, I feel like those guys, what they did take from Bach um, was this idea of a moving bass line. Take so they weren't really just this. landing on us. Right. Look at this left hand. that motion. Yeah, and it's not like there's a chord on every one of those. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So if we look at just the bass line with this, it's something like... Ah, it's just really moving up. No doubt. So I feel like they probably thought of that first and then found some chords to fill in the gap between the bass line and the melody. That makes very good sense. And that's an interesting way to look at that. Instead of just saying, hey, I'm going to harmonically nail a chord down and find a melodic thing to go with, they found a nice moving Almost a, a bass melody, if you want to Almost call it Almost a that. bass yeah. melody. They found another melodic thing to, to go with, and so that all works. Now let's kind of fill in the gaps around it. So, so what would some of those gaps be? Well, let's see. If we did it in a simplest way, um, if we kind of watch, I'll play you down here in the oh, muddy zone okay. and try to keep this simple. Sure. Um, if I can. Watch the bottom of the piano. Just so it does kind up. of work. It, it, I, let's say maybe from the to, we'll bookend it by saying it starts out on an F, right? I mean, right. that's pretty safely the you know, home base for this one is starting on an F chord, and it kind of then walks its way up till you finally nail down a D minor. Is that what it was? That's that right. Kind of walks right up. up. Uh huh. Okay. So do that one more time. So it would like the first would be an F. I'm going to spread yeah, this out. Fine. I'm going to play the chords in a different position. F A C right. is now F A C. Okay. Because it will isolate the bass line and be able sure. to see it better, and it'll fill it in and sound better. That's fine. So this, that's an F. Okay. You walk your way up, right? Really, that's still an F. F, G minor, F, and an inversion. Ah, so there it is. In 
Okay. Small way, there it is in a big way. Okay, that makes sense. And then it goes to a B flat. The four, that makes sense. That's a four Almost, chord. Right? Now we break out of the key. There's a G7 here because of this bass line. All right. Yeah, it kind of almost comes home. home to the D to the D minor. Okay. If you were to play, make mistakes in here and play the wrong notes in the middle, I think you'd still get away with it if you hang on to that bass line. That's that's the what da, glues yeah. it together. Okay. So cool. Now moving on to this tune, like structure-wise, what it it has is it is it kind of an A A B A or A A B? I can't think. It, really. It's kind of an and let's see, it's it's a very different kind of tune. It has the melody and then it has a little tag. Yeah, so it has this little tag and then it has a sort of a, a chorus. Blackbird. Yeah, boy, it's almost atonal at that point. It yeah, kind of jumps out of, of key. A lot of stuff in this song. It goes all over the place. Now what do you do? To, we'll move off the the you know, assuming you'd find all those chords on the lead sheet or, or get your way through it or listen to the recording is probably in this case the best way to hammer through this tune. Um, what are some you know intricate things or maybe some some arranging type of things you would do to turn this into an interesting piece on the piano? Well, one thing I would do is I do like to spread the chords out. Listen how much nicer um, instead of if we so I'm playing so, the chords okay. with the insides of my two hands and the You're, the top of this hand's playing the melody and the bottom of this hand's playing the chords. Okay, or the bass should be. Playing the bass, excuse bass, me. Bass, right, yeah, okay. So it's almost like I have three hands. That's actually a, a good way player, to think about a that. A melody player and And then the middle ones are, are filling all the chord tones in. That's a good way to think about it. I don't think we've ever said that out loud that way, and that is a healthy way to think of that, that you've got to, you, that pinky's going to keep the bass happening. You've got to keep the melody on top. That's kind of a rule. And then fill in all the middle. That's right. Good way to think of it. And then, because I'm a jazz player, I just like to, to load it up with some licks and, and fills. Uh-huh. I'm always on the lookout for the spots in a melody that can use some, some, some fill, if you will. So if we listen to this tune, there's a big space, hole here. Right? So I want to fill that space. Okay. But I want to fill it in a way that is uh, in a different range, in a different style than the melody, so that it's not confused with the melody. So it's clearly, this is a melody, now we've taken a break and I'm kind of accompanying myself. And now I'm waiting, back to the melody. Back to the melody. It's almost okay. like the singer takes a breath, piano player plays a little bit down here, right. the singer comes back, okay. although the singer is the top of my hand. Cool. So okay. um, I, I came up with this neat little lick here that I like a lot. What was that? Can you just give that one away? Sure. Can we do that one real slowly? That yeah. Was kind of an, you know, not only did it sound cool, but it had a great theatrical effect. You know. Yeah, it looks yeah, nice. Right? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a good hands visual. Diving over hands. It's well, right. it's the same lick over and over, really. Um, it's a simple thing um, in shape-wise for a piano player. It starts on an E flat and walks up to an F. So you're just doing those three notes. Those Ba-da-da. three notes. Okay. And then, in exactly the same shape, and also starting on a black key, I do it on the B flat. B flat. Okay. That's the whole lick. Okay. So I do it over and over. Okay. Now but I want to do that fast. It. It's tough. So I take the hands diving one over the other because um, I can get it in that way. Okay. Same lick over and over. Do that slowly again, hand over hand, and then we'll see you a little bit fast. Okay. So now give, give us a full full speed one. This is one of those, yeah, let's see. Uh, okay. This is one of those licks that I, I used to have a piano student who'd say, oh, what was that, what was that? Show me that, break that lick down. Right. And I'd show it to him, and he'd say, oh, is that all that is? Yeah. That's <laughs> where so you liked it before you knew what it was. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A lot that's of this right. stuff's pretty simple. It's that the same thing over and over. And, and it's nice the fact that you can really run those up and down a piano at any time you want to do it. It's another kind of a good arrow to have in your quiver, you know? It's exactly. A, whoop that one out whenever needed, right? There's a lick built into the tune, too. It's funny, I, I, I've seen a couple of lead sheet versions of this, and they seem to struggle with this little part of the melody. Um, it's something like... Right after the chorus, there's a, a kind of a wail that those guys do. It's like, how do you notate that? So you do a little fill there too, as cool. well, sort of asking for it. Okay, now working through now, again. This now we're going to jump to the rhythmic side of this thing. This is this one really stops, and it's not. Uh, there's, it seemed like there were a bunch of measures that were you know different meter changes throughout the thing. 
it's one of those things that sounds natural. You can sing the song and enjoy it, and then you look at it notate and you think, what? Is a bar a 2 4, a bar a 4 4? What yeah, is all that's this? Yeah, that's what I, and that is, that's an interesting, from a songwriting standpoint, I guess. This is one of those ones where you see these guys, they were geniuses, you know, and, the, and they did it, and Paul McCartney writing this or whatever. That, you know, I almost think the lack of training was an aid. Yeah, you know, there's yeah. lots of times they, they didn't know it. You have to have like just change. enough yeah. training in there. Yeah, just, and he's, it just was off and at it. And there are these, these killer, beautiful tunes that have stood the test of time, and, and they're really kind of out, you know? That's <laughs> right. This one is they're definitely kind of, you know, different. They're kind of out from a meter standpoint and out from a chord change standpoint. And I agree. Out in left field, but they're, they're great tunes That's actually why I, I picked it. I thought, all right, um, you asked me to do a, a something from the rock literature, sure. if you will, and I said, all right, let me get something meaty. Yeah, it, well, it is. It, it is, no doubt me. about it. Now, any other, you're going to be getting into any other, like, yeah, little licks like that you can show us in this one? Um, I, I like to do a little game um, sometimes. Well, I used to play f uh, for a lot of years, like in restaurants and quiet settings where you're off on the side. I don't have to do that anymore, but I, <laughs> yeah, thank goodness, did that for 20 years. Um, and I would get bored, really, so... Yeah. I would miss playing with my bass player and and um, sometimes a saxophone player. I'd miss it being by myself. So I would give myself little challenges. I'd say, well, uh, let's have a bass solo, but that'd be my left hand. Let's okay. have a, you know, a saxophone solo, that's my right hand. And sometimes when you're in a band setting, those guys will kind of friendly, in a friendly way, compete sure. with each other. They go trading, trading four sometimes. Yeah, I've yeah. played in groups and all. I can do this, you can do this, let's go yeah. back and forth. So, so and you'll I, hear, Stan, just to explain that so it doesn't confuse anybody, they'll, you'll hear groups when they're playing and they'll, they'll take They'll, they'll trade off soloing basically in the same chorus. So, you know, they'll start doing it. So a lot of times you hear that with drummers too. They'll, you know, yeah, exactly. one player will play two or four feet, and then the drummer will take two, and then they'll go back and they'll just keep trading back and forth. But in the case of melodic instruments, they almost, yeah, it's almost like a, a battle. They'll hear it's call and response. And yeah, it's, either a, it's to a friendly each, battle. You're yeah, right. They're it's... either trying to, yeah, you know, compete with each other or copy each other, either one, you know. So I like to do some kind of improvisation in any song I play, and this song does not lend itself to a, a, a solo inside of the chord changes or in the middle of the tune, um, or improvisation in the middle of the tune. So I thought it's fun to do that up front, do a little jamming first. Ah, so you're just going to kind of yeah, open it up at the beginning before you dig in and... Get, so almost okay. like the audience would think, what is, what's he doing? What is that? And then it sort of takes form, and oh, I recognize it. It's Blackbird. Okay. Now, the fun thing about this is that anybody who's right-handed is uh, going to have an easier time playing the piano with their right hand. So That's the left hand has funny. to be uh, um, more cooler challenged. or hipper. <laughs> yeah. We have to find some other way to be to be win the battle. Okay. And that's true of real life, right? A bass player can't get around as fast, but it's a big instrument sure. as, a, as a smaller instrument. So, um, so we'll hear at the beginning of this one, we'll hear you, what, competing hand to hand? Yeah, so instead sort of. of trading fours with the drummer, you're going to trade fours from left hand to right hand, or yes. twos or whatever it will end up being, right? That's what I thought I'd do, and, okay. and it, may, it may come off as rehearsed, but I can promise you that I don't really know what's going to happen next. That's <laughs> what we like. That's, that's the reason we all do this, right? Here comes a new piece of art, and may it never come out exactly like this again, right? Exactly. All right. Well, anyway. listen, let's hear you play Blackbird then. This is Bradley Soash and his arrangement of Blackbird. All right. Hey, I've seen that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mm, that was it. Nice key change at the end. Yeah, that. that was great. Energy. Thanks. Thanks, I appreciate it. All right. This excerpt from the public television program, The Piano Guy, has been brought to you by the National Piano Foundation, serving people who love music since 1966. Whether you're young or just young at heart, there's never been a better time to learn to play piano.